Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where I have upgraded our Elevons. Pray that I do not upgrade them further. We're going to immediately put this into afterburning mode. There we go. And we do actually want to gimbal on these engines for right now. Now, this still is not in a finished position right now. We still don't have any way to use this oxidizer that's in here. I'm going to remove it for now so that we're not carrying all that weight. Later on, we may still need it, so we'll keep it around for now. Well, we're we're not going to keep it around. We're emptying the tanks, but we're keeping those tanks around for now. That and I just like the overall profile that this thing is cutting so far. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm less happy with its performance, but I did discover through some off-camera testing just now that it appears to run much straighter if you pull back on the throttle, or rather, if you if you pitch up like that. Um, gimbal on, please. Thank you. Okay, so SAS on, and we're going to throttle this on up. And let's do what we can. Let's see if we can get this taking off. You can see here, this definitely controls better. So this is what we want here, is for it to control substantially better. We're still pretty heavy, we're picking up a bit of a shimmy here, and I don't like this shimmy. I'm turning the SAS off, and hoping that that deals with it. We're at the end of the runway here, and yeah, that shimmy is not good. So, I mean, this, these are all simulated. That shimmy wasn't picked up before I upgraded the Elevons. Let's try that again with SAS off. The SAS is primarily only there for in space, right? That's primarily the only reason that it's in existence. And in flight mode, it's probably going to do reasonably okay. I feel like these Elevons might be too powerful. And if that's the case, we can turn off gimbling on the engines. In fact, maybe we should test that right now because they are gimbled off currently. So let's try it with SAS on. And that is with this reaction wheel running. And let's see how this goes. Do we pick up that shimmy? We're veering off here, but we're able to control it and get it nicely under control. I don't really like the overlap on these elevons either. I'm probably going to change them, in all honesty. I feel like it's largely a failed experiment. I also feel like largely the only reason that we took off here was because the runway ended. <laughs> so there's that. And yeah, that definitely helps. That helps pretty dramatically, in fact. So let's do a little bit of a test here. Hmm. Interesting. We're not very stable. Well, let's just accelerate as quick as we can here. With, and this is without the oxidizer. So the question is, just how much can we actually get here? Okay, we're getting some good acceleration here. There's another option, now that I think about it, that we might pursue in a little bit here. But for right now, we're just going to... Oh, we have a lot of roll authority. Our pitch authority is pretty high as well with these Elevons. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too much. I know from testing that we have flame out somewhere around 28 kilometers. We have our uh, air intakes can't take in enough air anymore at that point. Somewhere around there anyway. And I'm just trying to uh, position us slightly above the horizon here. But uh, the plane doesn't really want to climb. It's quite aerodynamically stable right now. Which isn't necessarily a great thing, but it's not necessarily an awful thing either. So we're just trying to get some speed right now. You can see here that our speed is beginning to cap out a little bit. And we're also two seconds from apoapsis right now. Now we're continually powered here, so we're never going to quite hit this apoapsis at this point.
and this is going better than I expected, in all honesty. Certainly better than I expected. A little noisier than I expected, too. Let's actually hop into the settings here and turn down the spacecraft volume by, like, 10%. That's better. I'm not going to call it great, but it's better. You can see here we are still increasing in speed. That's great. But uh, our thrust to weight here is likely going down. Likely. We can also attempt a vertical ascent, kind of space shuttle-esque. It's an option. I'm not sure if I want to pursue that just yet. I want to try a couple of different things here. I'd like to get some additional altitude. I don't like the fact that we have to have afterburner on from the get-go here. I'm not a huge fan of that. Our apoapsis is continuing to rise. As is our surface velocity, actually. Our orbital velocity, we don't care about currently. The surface velocity is what's important. We've come quite a distance. That's for sure. The real problem here is we have a lack of vacuum engines, right? That's the real issue. You can definitely see our thrust to weight is going down as our altitude is rising. That is for sure a thing that is happening. And I don't think we're going to get into orbit, to be completely frank. This isn't going to happen. You can see here our surface speed is already decreasing. We don't have enough vertical speed to make it into orbit here. Even if we did, we uh, couldn't do anything in orbit with just these afterburner turbofan engines. That's not going to happen. So I think we may want to completely rethink what we've got going on here. In, at least in terms of, not, not the airframe, but in terms of the engines. I think that's something that we definitely want to do. We need to throttle, or rather, we need to pitch up a bit here. We were kind of nose down for a bit there. Okay. Let's go ahead and, for kicks and giggles, kick in our SRBs. And let's try to pitch up a bit here. Pitch up fairly sharply. Try to get a good amount of vertical speed. That's about 45 degrees there. We'll call that good. And we'll see how much apoapsis we can get to here. We're not going to get into orbit. Fascinating. 45 kilometers. That is not bad. All things considered. And yeah, we've got flame out here because we're oxygen deprived. But that's a good proof of concept, I feel like. Now, we've got some obvious issues here. These afterburning turbofans, they're not much use in space. So what do we want to do about that? I mean, I feel like this won't get us off the ground. It's funny, and actually we would want the nerve atomic rocket motor. It's funny, but I feel like it doesn't get us off the ground. Like, I feel like we have no chance of taking off with this. Now, the nice thing about these atomic rocket motors is they have a fairly decent specific impulse at vacuum. They have good thrust at vacuum for what they've got. And they only take in liquid fuel. They do not take in oxidizer, which means we can leave these oxidizer tanks empty. We can also ditch our radial intakes to save some weight. Unfortunately, I have a feeling this is not getting off the ground. At least not without the hammers fired at the get-go. Yeah, what we would need to do is we'd need to have something like this for our staging. This doesn't get off the ground. 0.11 thrust to weight ratio. Let's try it just to laugh at it, but it's not going to happen. This would be fairly effective once we were in orbit, though.
So the idea here is kind of that we use the SRBs to get into vacuum and to fly suborbital, right? And then we use the atomic rocket motors once we're in space. But how do we get to the point where the hammers can get us to space? We've got 503 seconds of burn here. Now these don't have gimbaling on them. Let's see if we start veering off. And how much speed we get. I do not expect... We are veering a little bit. I do not expect that we have any sort of... Okay, this is kind of spicy. Steering enabled here. I do not expect that we have any sort of flight event happening here. To be clear. I really don't expect we get off the ground. It'd be funny if we did, but I don't think that's going to be a thing. If we got off the ground with this, that would be incredible. Like, completely incredible. As in, there's no credibility there. Look at this. We're just chilling at 29.7 meters per second. We're currently decelerating. <laughs> we can get off the ground if we fire the SRBs here. Don't get me wrong. That'll lift us off and get us some altitude. But I don't see a scenario where this gets us enough altitude for these guys to get us into space. I don't think that happens. You can see here our time to apoapsis is decreasing. So it's an interesting concept, to be sure. And I want to make a few tweaks to the visuals on this thing as well. I want to move the wings slightly forward because we're seeing some kind of gross clipping over here. So I want to move these very, very slightly forward. Like that. That's better. So we've managed to drop a little weight. I have a dumb idea. What happens if we double these SRBs? We go ahead and put this in mirror mode. We attach this, say, right here. And we're going to need, well, actually, can I get back at that? We need to, like, zoom in here and get to this. That's the cockpit. Strut connector. Radial decoupler. That's what I want. Okay. So we mount this up here, hypothetically. Something like that. We would need to make sure that it's mounted in basically exactly the correct position. And we'd want to grab that. Mount it like that. And then rotate it. Like that. And then move it to be, say, there. As far as where this strut connects, it doesn't really matter, but I'll put it in line. Like that. Oh, and you know what? We should move it this way as well. Just to be consistent. Does this get off the ground with the use of the SRBs? So the idea here... And I'm concerned about these wings. But the idea here is then we fire these SRBs to get us off the ground and in space. We can fire our atomic rocket motors simultaneously to add what little thrust they can. Now, these aren't going to get us high enough, but these might be able to get us into space at that point. It's really dumb looking. Maybe we would be better off mounting them over here. What do you think? Maybe... Hmm. Let's give it a go. We can mount them from, like, the outside in. So, turn it around like this. Uh, not like that. I'm just going to duplicate this again. And we'd want to mount it, say, here, hypothetically. And then we'd need to change the actual positioning of the radial decoupler. There we go. Bring it down to about there. 
and then change the rotation to be that. Probably move it forward here. Or maybe it should be a little further back like this. You know, that might actually be fine. I'm a little concerned about it crashing into here when we decouple. Could maybe plop it over this way a little further. Like that. It does look better under the wing. There's no doubt about it. And there's this little bit of ugliness, but that should be fine in theory. And then we would fire the outside boosters at the beginning. Like that. Do we take off like this? I think we might. Do we manage to get into space with this? That's the question. Can we achieve orbit? We're probably going to need some form of ability to refuel this in orbit because, I mean, those atomic rocket motors are very efficient once you get into space, but we don't actually carry all that much fuel. We can't, well, we carry a, like, uh, we carry like 500 seconds of burn time, I suppose. But let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we fire like this. Okay, we're definitely pulling to the side. Lift off. Let's achieve a decent angle here. Okay. Ah, yes, we need this to be here. I don't necessarily think that this does the trick. Like, for real, I don't necessarily think it works. <laughs> but it's an interesting concept, for sure. It's getting us some altitude, which gets us through the thicker portion of the atmosphere, which makes these far more efficient, these atomic engines. But I feel like we need more missiles. It's definitely interesting, isn't it? That got us to 0.58 thrust to weight ratio. And as we're going here, our meters per second is going up, not down. I think we might be onto something here. Our time to apoapsis is definitely decreasing. I feel like one more solid rocket motor and we get there. Also, I never did this. That would have helped. That would have helped a lot. So let's go ahead and revert that back to the space plane hangar. I think we're getting close here. So we've got our missiles here. And they definitely help us in getting to space. What if we had, right down this center here, one big... SRB. We'd probably want to have a radial decoupler or maybe even like a uh, explosive decoupler of some type. Uh, that might not be a bad idea. Ejection force of 260 for this. So something along the lines of this guy. Right up on top here. What if we put in a fairly large SRB? Like the thoroughbred. This is ridiculous looking. This is utterly ridiculous. And slightly hilarious. Now, I'm not... I'm not saying this looks good. <laughs> it objectively, objectively doesn't. And I have a sneaking suspicion that these tail fins are going to go bye-bye the moment we detach this. We put an aerodynamic nose cone on our large, our large missile here. Uh, not that large of an aerodynamic nose cone. That large of an aerodynamic nose cone. We would need to strut this in. There's no doubt about that. We would strut it in probably here. As well as up here. 
And the idea would be as follows. I have no idea if this thing gets us off the ground. I suspect it does. The idea would be as follows. We don't fire the atomic rocket motor right away. We fire the thoroughbred in stage one. Then we decouple and fire the outer two. So that would be this. And then these would be moved, say, up here. So we decouple that and fire these two. Hopefully that gives us enough space. This will decouple and spin in this direction, theoretically, away from us. And we should speed out of the way. I hope. This is ridiculous. Utterly, utterly ridiculous. We are also going to need some form of solar panels on this. I just realized we probably should have, like, a pair of 3x2 photovoltaic cells. And we'll just place those. Uh, not quite there. Right about there. This kind of ruins the look of this thing, doesn't it? It kind of does. But then these fire, and then these fire, and the outer ones fall off, like so. And then our atomic motors fire, and these missiles fall off. So I guess you could call this like a strategic missile, and these are tactical missiles. <laughs> Except we're using them to get to space. Okay, let's see how horrible this is. This is going to be fairly ridiculous. I think we're going to want to thrust limit this, this SRB, now that I think about it. I'm fairly certain we're going to want to thrust limit it. I'm also fairly certain that it's very silly. I'm not fairly certain. I'm extremely certain that this is a very silly setup. What's this thrust weight? 1.49 at the get-go. Can't see anything through all of the smoke. Okay, we immediately tip over and crash. Good to know. We'll revert that back. And we're going to do the following. First things first. I'm going to thrust limit this down to like 70%. It'll just get more powerful as we go up. That gets us up over 1.0 thrust to weight ratio. That should hopefully be enough. Second, I'm going to disable gimbling on it. Third... I'm going to enable steering on this. Okay. Let's try that again. I don't necessarily expect this to work. If we manage to figure out a way to make this work, this would get us into space. Guaranteed. Into orbit, even. Now, we don't really have a way to refuel it, and that is something that we want. So we'll come back to that. Wow, that's a lot of wiggling over here. That is a lot of wiggling in this wing. And I think that's our problem. I think that's why we're veering. Let's revert this back and put in a couple of struts on the bottom. And we're going to try to do this a little bit tastefully. So we're going to put in strut connectors in mirror mode from here to here, as well as from here to here. There. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. That giant SRP is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, it's so ridiculous. Do we even get off the ground with 1.04 thrust to weight is the question. I don't know the answer to that. We may have to dial that number in. But this is all simulated, so that's fine. That's definitely much, much better on the wiggle factor. We're still wiggling a little bit here, but... Let's see how this goes. I'm expecting another very large explosion. Trying to hold a straight attitude is impossible with this. Okay. I'm going to revert that back to launch. Again. Yeah, trying to hold that straight attitude is very, very difficult. I have a different idea. What if we swapped this stage and had this fire first? Then we detach these guys and fire this, and then we detach 
that and fire these. Or maybe we do this one last. That's something that we definitely could do. So we would put these two down here. We have breaks, please. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so we fire these two, and then this one would go here. We detach our outers, and we fire our inners, our inner missiles, at that point. Then we detach our inner missiles and fire our big boy, and then we detach our big boy and fire our rocket, our atomic rockets. Like that. Does that get us off the ground? This is only 0.39 thrust to weight, so I feel like it doesn't. This thing is so heavy. I think we have to burn this first. It's very difficult to keep this thing going straight down the runway. But we'll give it a go. Yeah. We don't take off with these. So I'm going to revert that back to the space plane hangar then. And we're going to go back to our original plan there. But I'm going to try to find some way to further stabilize this. Maybe involving further widening these landing gears. I don't know. It'll be interesting. We need to get this stable so that it can fire in this orientation. We need this guy to be the one to get us off the ground. And I think... We have to do it like this. Actually, I'm going to do one final test here before I end this. I want to just see what this is like with this gimbal on and attempting to stay straight. It has a big tendency to tip because it's well out of our center of mass, right? So that's, that's the core issue here is we need to figure out a way to get this more in line with our center of mass like these guys are. They're mirrored, so their joint thrust is in is basically in line with the center of mass. This is not exactly. Okay. Yeah, we pretty much immediately have too much thrust there to compensate, and we start tipping. Our wheels come off the ground. So that tells me that we should probably try to get our wheels much, much wider apart. And actually, I'm going to give that a go right now before I forget. So let's just get these as wide apart as we possibly can. We're going to put them out on the tips of the wings. What could possibly go wrong here? It definitely doesn't look awful. Actually, I'm going to put them like... There. Okay. That's very, very wide apart. We shouldn't have much leeway for tipping now. Let's give it a go. That should stabilize us pretty dramatically on the runway. I've kind of ruined the look of this thing. I know. But uh, some sacrifices must be made for a functional spacecraft. <laughs> okay. See what we can do. Ooh, this is very, very rough. It really wants to pull off to either side, and it doesn't care which side it is. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Well, I'm going to continue experimenting with this, but I'm going to put a cut in here. And next episode, we should have a variant of this that is capable of making it to space. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.